Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are looking at another RTX card. This one is from Pallet and it is the 2070 Game Rock Premium. If it looks familiar to you, that's because we've already looked at the 2080 Game Rock Premium and the cards are very, very similar in terms of their design as well as the cooler, but we'll get to that stuff later on. In terms of this 2070 here though, it is worth saying it is one of the overclocked editions with an 1815 MHz boost clock and in terms of price, this one is going to set you back £569.99 here in the UK at the time of filming. So the question we're asking today is, is this card worth buying? Well, we'll start with a look at the design, and as I mentioned, it is essentially almost identical to the 2080 Game Rock Premium. So that means we have what is quite a large card, and we'll touch on dimensions in just a minute, and it's got a mostly uh, black plastic shroud, although these sections here on either side, these are metal, or they do look like they're just being screwed on to the plastic itself, which I would guess is simply for aesthetics. We also have these two 95mm fans, that's 95mm blade to blade on the front, which are a translucent grey, and again, as far as I can tell, these are exactly the same as with the 2080 Game Rock Premium. There is a 0dB mode as well, so the fans will stop spinning under light loads, but there's a, a little bit more to talk about. Uh, in that regard so we'll get to that later on in the review. I did already mention the fact that this is a big card so if we quickly look at the dimensions this one actually measures 292 by 130 by 59.6 millimeters so it is a very large card it's to this day the thickest card I've actually reviewed it's effectively a triple slot card palette says it's a 2.7 slot card but you will need three uh, spare expansion slots so very thick, uh, quite long as well, almost 30 centimeters. So for a lot of these modern day RTX cards, I do recommend just checking it will fit in your case. If we just stick with the front of the shroud for the moment as well, it's worth touching on this kind of Y-shaped bit here in the middle. This is actually where the LED lighting is on the card. There's no RGB anywhere else on the card. It's just this kind of bit on the front of the shroud. So first of all, that to me is strange because it means you're only really going to see the lighting if you mount this card vertically. So anyone who sticks it in uh, without a vertical bracket, for instance, you're really not going to be able to see the RGB. And the second thing, as I would say, is the RGB itself is very, very basic. You essentially have just three different options to choose from. You can have it controlled via temperature, so it will be green if it's under 50C or orange if it's over 50C. You can also pick one single static colour or you can go through this kind of kind of clanky looking rainbow effect which isn't the smoothest I've seen. So overall I think the RGB as a whole is quite basic. If that's a factor for you, the likes of Asus and Aorus do I think do this much better than the palette implementation here. But then again, it may not be as big a factor for some, but it's definitely worth touching on. Moving on now to the front of the card, here we can see there is a small silver Game Rock logo, although as I mentioned, this is not RGB, and that sits just underneath the GeForce RTX branding. If we move to the very front of the card though, just by the IO bracket, there is actually a dual BIOS switch. Now, interestingly, Palette has um, kind of done something a little bit different with the dual bias functionality. So both are actually the same clock speed and both actually have the same fan curve. The only difference is that one has the zero decibel fan stop mode and the other doesn't. But curiously, by default, it uses the BIOS that doesn't have the fan stop mode. So if you just stick in this card and don't touch any of the different BIOS settings, the fans are going to spin constantly. For me, that's just a strange decision as you could very well use this card and not even know that the zero dB mode is there. So I really think it should be on by default. And as we'll get to later in the thermal section, the card could easily handle the zero dB mode. Flipping over to the back plate now though, again, it has this very polarizing design that we saw from the 2080 Game Rock Premium. The back plate itself is actually, I think, a very nice, good looking brushed metal, but it's of course the Game Rock logo, which is printed in this kind of big Guitar Hero font, which takes up uh, most of the far side of the card. I think it really is quite divisive. You might like it. Personally, it's not my cup of tea, and you know, as it's subjective, I don't like to comment too much on here, but definitely, as we saw with the 2080, it is going to prove divisive. And Palette potentially could have gone with a safer option, which would have a slightly wider appeal than this Game Rock logo on the back currently. Other things to mention are the power connectors. This Palette 2070 requires 1 8 pin and 1 6 pin, which is pretty standard for an overclock 2070. And then if we quickly look at the display I.O. as well, again, pretty standard, three display ports, one HDMI, 
and one of the new USB-C ports. Moving on now to look at the inside of the card and the PCB, it's pretty simple to get to, you just need to remove eight screws from the back of the card and then you can kind of pull the PCB and the heatsink apart. In terms of the PCB, the main things to mention are the improved Powerface design, so it's now an 8 plus 2 design, which is up from 6 plus 2 on the Founders Edition, and we can also see that the 8 gigabytes of memory comes from Micron, it's 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with the 2070. In terms of the GPU itself as well, this is labeled TU106-400A, and as we know, that simply means that this is a bin chip which is suitable to be sold with a factory overclock. In terms of the heatsink, this again looks identical to the heatsink of the 2080 GameRock Premium, which is actually a pretty good thing. It's got five thick copper heat pipes. It looks like they're eight millimeters in diameter each. And then the GPU die itself contacts with this small little copper base plate. There are also separate cold plates for the VRAM chips as well as the VRM. And you can also see these kind of salmon color thermal pads which of course provide all the necessary cooling for those modules as well. If we move on to performance now we're going to show you our 1440p graphs. If you are interested in the 1080p and 4k benchmarks you can find those on kickguru.net as well as our full testing methodology. So if we start with 3D Mark, uh, that's 3D Mark time spy and then move on to the rest of our games. The main thing to point out really is just how similarly this Palette 2070 and the MSI Gaming Z 2070 perform uh, in relation to each other. That's because they're both overclocked 2070 models, they've got similar uh, factory overclocks, and then we can see the difference between the two is very, very small. The MSI does just edge ahead across most of our titles, although as we mentioned the differences are tiny, it's actually you know a fraction of a frame per second depending on the title. So both perform very, very consistently, and for me, the 2070 is best suited to 1440p gaming, potentially even with a high refresh rate monitor. If we move on to look at the average clock speed of both cards, we can see why the MSI card was editing just ahead. That card was averaging about 1930 MHz under load, whereas this Palette 2070 is averaging just over 1900 MHz. So it's about a 30 MHz gap, and it's not much, but it does explain the reason why that MSI was pulling ahead, you know, just by those very, very fine margins. This Palette GameRock Premium 2070, however, does do very, very well in terms of thermals. That's because the GPU core peaked at only 64 degrees, which actually makes it one of the best results we've seen over the last few months. It's the coolest 2070 we've seen so far, so credit really does have to go for Palette. It seems that bringing down the cooler that was on the 2080 and seeking on the 2070 instead uh, obviously has you know a real world benefit. So a peak of 64C, as we mentioned, is very, very impressive for an overclock 2070. In terms of noise levels as well, it's you know similarly excellent. We've got a peak of just over 40 decibels when stressing the GameRock Premium 2070 in 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. So it's barely above 40 decibels, so again, that makes it one of the best results we've seen over the last few months. The card does produce some noise while idling. It's very, very quiet, but you can still just about hear it. That's because by default, as we mentioned, the fans do spin at a constant 500 RPM. So for me, I really would flick it over to the BIOS 2, the secondary BIOS, which has that zero dB fan stop mode. And again, like I said, I really think that should be the default mode because you could install this card and not know about the dual BIOS functionality and then you know spend the next couple of years with the fan spinning when you could very well turn them off. In terms of power consumption as well, just a little reminder that we do have dedicated sensors so we can measure the power consumption of the graphics card itself. We've got sensors in the PCIe slot as well as in the PCI power connectors themselves. So this just lets us isolate the power draw for the graphics card only. So for this Palette 2070, we can see it's drawing just under 220 watts under load, which is pretty standard for an overclock 2070. It's about 10 watts more frugal than that MSI Gaming Z, although actually if we look at the MSI Armor 8G, which is a reference clock 2070, we can see that this pallet card is drawing about 35 watts more under load. We did also try our hand at a manual overclock, and while we got a decent result, headroom is limited considering this is a factory overclock card already, so we could add an extra 85 megahertz to the GPU core and an extra 650 megahertz to the memory. This actually brought our average clock speed up to 1999 MHz, so we're so close to that magic 2 GHz mark. But even so, uh, hitting around that frequency actually still brought our Fire Strike score up by almost 5%, and we gained an extra 4 FPS when playing Deus Ex and Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p. The card itself was also able to handle the overclock no problem. The GPU core did rise 3 degrees, but still that's only up to 67C, which is you know, again, an excellent result for a card running at essentially two gigahertz. And noise levels barely rose by a decibel, so still peaking at just over 41 dB. Again, that's still very, very quiet, and you'd actually 
probably be hard pressed to tell the difference between the noise levels with the card stock and when overclocked. So wrapping up this review of the Palette RTX 2070 Game Rock Premium, overall I have to say it's actually a really competent card. You know, it's very cool, it's very quiet, and while it's just marginally slower than the MSI Gaming Z 2070 when it comes to our game figures, the difference is so small as it would make no difference in the real world. So while this is definitely an excellent card, my biggest problem with it definitely comes when we get to value. For me, I really think that RTX 2070 is most appealing when the cards are priced at the base MSRP of 469. For that, you do have to go with a reference clock card, but still it's faster than a GTX 1080 while also being cheaper than a GTX 1080. When cards like this palette come in at you know 570, we've seen cards up to 600 pounds, that really puts it in GTX 1080 Ti territory, which is faster and thus makes a purchase of a 2070 at that price point a lot harder to justify. So if you are looking for a 2070, my suggestion, and it has been the case since launch day, is really go with a reference clock 2070 like the MSI Armor HG we already mentioned, and then just factory overclock it yourself. You'll be able to add an extra 150 megahertz or so, and that will bring the speeds up similar to what the factory overclock models like this are, but then again, you save yourself 100 pounds in the process. So overall, while this palette card is definitely a very capable 2070, for me, it's very nature as a factory overclock 2070 with the added price premium that that brings. Definitely makes it harder to recommend against a reference clock 2070 at the cheaper £469 price point. So I'm Dominic Forkit Guru. This has been my review of the RTX 2070 Game Rock Premium. If you like this video, do leave us a like and a comment below. If you're looking for a 2070, would you rather go for a reference model or would you be more interested in a factory overclock model like this palette? If you're new to KitGuru as well, or perhaps you've been a long time watcher and haven't subscribed yet, please do hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot more graphics cards to bring, but then we're also gonna have reviews of laptops, processors, motherboards, all sorts we cover here. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of those videos, you can also hit the notification bell and you'll get a notification whenever a new video goes live. Until then though, I'm Dominic for KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.